Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am so happy today to have my special guest today, Dr. Demiso, A. Josie, founder of the Empowerment Perspective Group. So welcome today to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. And I met you, oh my gosh, it was it two years ago? I don't even know. But it was about two years ago. Yeah, it's crazy how time flies. It's not flying right now, though, with this coronavirus. No. <laughs> um, but we met two years ago because a mutual friend, um, you were looking for fitness trainers and to be on your podcast. And so I was so grateful for that opportunity. And now I'm paying it back, too, because now you're on the podcast. So tell me a little bit about the Empowerment Perspective Group. Wow, the Empowerment Perspective Group, we're um, an educational and motivational speaking company that kind of just uh, does consulting, um, obviously podcasting. Um, we publish books, um, articles. Um, we put some videos together too as well. Um, we just, a group of people that basically get, got together and wanted to give people some useful information and to celebrate what we call educators. I mean, educators come in all shape, forms, and fashion. So it's not your traditional teacher. Um, obviously, you have been on our show. We would consider you to be an educator. Anyone that's doing anything positive in their community or around the world, um, we try to bring that message to, to our audience. Um, and uh, it kind of got born out of the fact that I did write my book, and I'm sure we're probably going to talk about this a little bit later, um, mm -hmm. but I wanted a platform to be able to share my story, um, so I kind of created this idea of having the empowerment perspective, because it kind of came out of the idea of the book, um, and I kind of just grabbed a couple other people, and then we started speaking on numerous topics, and people started requesting us, and I said, hey, let's have a podcast, let's see if <laughs> that works, so, and then just kind of just blossomed from there. That's awesome. And you guys do like outreach also, don't you? Right. So yeah. we do mentorships. We've um, worked with nonprofits. Um, we used to have a nonprofit as well. Um, so we're really, I guess, sort of the jack of all trades sort of. Um, and we're just about helping people. Uh, we do annual toy drive where we raise money for uh, toys for tots for a uh, child. Um, also, we pick a, a particular family that is struggling with pediatric cancer, and we donate to them during Christmas time, um, during uh, Thanksgiving, we get out turkeys, look for pockets to help people, and just want to be a service to um, people that are in, in need. That's awesome. I mean, you're like the little angels of the world. <laughs> you know? um, so you mentioned your book. Tell me a little bit about your book, because I'm a little upset at Amazon. They're not doing the two-day delivery and <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to get your book in time before we did this podcast. So please share a little bit about your book. You mean to tell me my book is not considered essential? It's not considered essential right now. No, <laughs> unless we run out of toilet paper. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you won't use it for that. My story is really interesting. Um, and I wrote the book out of just as a personal therapeutic um, session for myself to kind of just, you know, here's my story and get it off my chest. Um, just a, a little bit of it is that, you know, growing up, you know, my dad left when we were little. I have two older brothers that are twins, so I'm the youngest of, of, the, of us three. Um, we, there was some abuse, some alcohol um, and drug addiction. Um, so the story kind of goes through that process of, you know, me figuring out how to get out of that. Um, what I learned in that process and where the empowerment perspective kind of comes from is I learned not um, that I couldn't change the situation. I couldn't change what happened to me in the past, but I can change how I looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, so the empowerment perspective is really about flipping everything that's negative that has happened to me um, and using it as a source of motivation and, 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 and empowerment, so to speak. So to speak, the book goes through, you know, my life story with that um, and obviously my relationships with different people. Um, and at the end of the book, I kind of give my keys to, I guess, success, you could say, on how I was able to flip my perspective um, and again, just using the negatives as, as a positive in my life. That's awesome. I think that's a good story to tell because there's a lot of people out there, unfortunately, that do go through horrible situations in family and growing up or, you know, things happen. And, you know, I know I have two teenagers now, which is frightening to say, but, <laughs> um, you know, they have been fortunate to not have those experiences, but I try to show them that like, you know, even if that something horrible does happen to you, you get to decide whether you want to kind of be a victim for the rest of your life or you want to use that empowerment to move forward. So that's, and that's brave of you to share your story. Now I, I'm definitely got to get the book and read it. 
<laughs> I mean, the, the, the weird thing for me too is it's because my story is also attached to so many other people. The hardest part was actually trying to write it to make it not seem like people are such horrible people that have, may have come across in my life. Um, and I did expose a lot of stuff about myself, but some it's impossible not to tell someone else's story along with yours on, on some level. Yeah, unless you're on a desert island. I mean, you interact with people, yeah. um, you know, and you can probably change names, but I'm sure <laughs> somebody's gonna be like, was that me? <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. The interesting thing is I did do that in the book and um, I was actually in the process of writing uh, the sequel to it where I was gonna actually have the people that I was in the book give their story of their interactions with me. So it would have been a collection oh. of stories of those people that were in the book so that they can have their say. And kind of That's go. very interesting. That's an interesting perspective. <laughs> yeah. That's so really I got cool. a couple of interesting entries back already. Um, but there's a few people that just probably won't, won't write, important people that won't write, so. Right, right. Huh, that's interesting. Let's dive into today's topic, and we are talking about managing time in quarantine. And if you want to touch on a little bit post-quarantine, feel free to do that as well. So go ahead and give us some tips. I mean, I think right now the important thing is, um, I know there's a lot of anxiety and things that are going on right now. And, and there's people that still have to work and still manage their time. And if you have kids, you still have to teach your kids on top of that. So there's a lot of things that's going on. So I think right now structure is extremely important um, in finding your routine. Um, every single morning I wake up, I write down a list of specific things that I have to attack during that particular day, or at least I want to. Um, I try to maintain my schedule. Um, I still get up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning at the very latest. Um, before I was able to go to the gym and get some stuff done, but unfortunately the gyms are closed, so I kind of just replaced that with some other things. But um, I think having a routine um, is extremely important. Uh, within that routine, having non-negotiables is extremely important, um, whether it be exercise or during that time. You know, from mm -hmm. 5 o'clock till 6 o'clock, I, there's no negotiating it. I have to do this from five to six. Or, you know, you're a religious person, you're reading the Bible, whatever it is, that whatever you define your non-negotiables as, because um, it's really easy right now to sleep in. It's really easy to, you know, <laughs> I'll do it later because you're not really on a, a regimented schedule. So um, figuring out ways to, to schedule your day is extremely important, as well as your downtime. That doesn't mean spend hours on end on Netflix. Because I'm pretty sure everyone watched every show that was on Netflix right now. But you definitely <laughs> need some downtime. Um, and you can mix your downtime with, you know, something healthy. Like, I go for walks. So during the time, um, I actually think better when I'm moving. So mm -hmm. if, if during the regular course of the day, because I'm an educator, I'm an assistant principal, I would walk around the building. And that's what generates my idea. So I just took that idea and kind of carried it over here so, you know, I can walk in the neighborhood and get my exercise in. But it's also generating ideas. Um, I also carry, uh, my phone is always on me, um, and I always record things and my ideas um, are, is recorded. As a matter of fact, fun fact is about 90% of my book was written in the car when I was driving to work. Through my oh, phone. cool. <laughs> so there's a, if you're a writer, there's a, a tip for that as well. Um, but having a routine and a non-negotiable is, is extremely important. But all of that has to come after the fact that you have a goal in mind. Uh, whether it's a daily goal, whether it's a long-term goal, um, otherwise, you're just going to be working just to be working and not really progressing towards anything. Um, so for me, I make daily goals in terms of what I want to get done within a day, but it's also a bigger goal of, you know, carrying out the mission of the empowerment perspective, also being a father and all those other mm -hmm. things. Um, but having that, that routine and those non-negotiables are, are extremely important. And I would pick a couple of them, eating, even eating healthy should be a non-negotiable. Um, I know it's tough right now and everything's not necessarily available to you, but those are just, there are certain little things that you should just be able to focus on. And you can let yourself slide in some of the other areas here and there. It's okay to, you know, you know like I said, have a little bit of downtime and, and do those things. But it's, I think you have to have these things. Um, even if things were normal, quote unquote, um, I think a lot of people, um, make it hard on themselves and it's easy not to go to the gym. It's easy not to, mm -hmm. to read or study because it's not a non-negotiable for you. So having a goal is important. Um, but even before that, I'm kind of reverse engineering this, if you could tell. So mm -hmm. you have your routine, but you can't have a routine without a plan and a goal. Right. Um, ultimately though, you have to have a why. And we talk about this all the time on the empowerment perspective group. Um, the thing that's important to you drives your behavior. 
So in order for you to, to actually obtain your goal, you have to have your why. And this is important because things will happen. Situations will occur. Life will get hard. It's your why that kind of pushes you through those tough times and those tough moments. I can't tell you what your why should be. That's something that's personal to you. Uh, that's important to you. But the important thing here is do not lie to yourself. Um, I deal with a lot of students all the time and, they, um, and adults too. And I say, what's the most important thing to you? And most of them will say my family. And mm -hmm. I'll say you're lying to, to these students because, and adults because your actions are not in line with what you'd say is important. There's no way that I'm an assistant principal. There's no way you're telling me your family's important, yet you're in trouble all the time, right? So right, your behaviors right. are not in line with what your why is. Um, so yeah. Be I, truthful in it. I find that with clients of mine, too, because they're like, well, yeah, I want to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, no, you don't. Because <laughs> if you, you would be doing certain things if you wanted to lose those 20 pounds. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it's um, also coach at, also at Ron University, their women's basketball team. And um, huh. I go in and I, I tell athletes all the time, I said, I could probably go in in any practice and tell you what team's going to make it to the championship or not. And they all say the same thing. We want to win a championship. You want to win a championship. But I observe the behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. So who's cursing their coach out? Who's not showing up to practice? All your behaviors are not aligned up with what your why is. Because if it, if it was, you know, you have a a better shot at winning the championship. And that's the same thing in life. Like we could say that, you know, again, our families are important or my health is important, but your behaviors are not in line with that. Um, so having a why and finding out what your real true why is, is extremely powerful um, for you to navigate the pitfalls of trying to reach your goal, which also <laughs> ties into your routine. Now, do you find that most people kind of take other people's whys and put them on themselves? Like, especially if you're working with students, you know, like what of their parents, they mm -hmm. think they should, the kids should be doing, you know, and they kind of adopt that why and which is right. a false why. Cause, right. I yeah. think it's a general problem with people in general, because we have as a society of what we think should be right. Right. Mm -hmm. Even though you might not feel like this is what you're, society's telling me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So we kind of fall into other people's why in that sense, uh, especially <laughs> young people, because the parents are supposed to, to know better. They have expectations for them and everything. And, you know, they kind of project their why on, 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 the, on the child. Um, and I kind of get frustrated uh, with that. I get young kids, but when you start dealing with middle school, high school age and college age students, like, um, yeah, to me, your job as, as a parent is to create a foundation for them and be able to create and cultivate their own whys, you know what I'm saying? So that they can go and live the life that they, they truly want. Um, otherwise they're gonna be living somebody else's life. But I think it's more of a, a broader problem in terms of we are doing what you know we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Um, One of the things that I, um, I recently have been diving into psychology, like really deep into psychology. And one of the things that I learned, which I, like I didn't wrap my brain around it at first, but it's like, you get to think whatever you want to think. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't even matter like what quote unquote fact is in front of you. You get to decide kind of like what we were saying in the beginning about, you know, if you went through a horrible childhood or something horrible happened to you, you get to decide if that's, you know, what you want to think about that. Absolutely. And I think somebody, I think, a lot of our, I guess, happiness and, and, and the direction that we go is so tied up in other people. Um, and I try to get the people that we talk to and our clients that um, on an individual basis that we counsel and say that, you know, you have to get into a space where your happiness is not tied to um, someone else's uh, you know, reaction to whatever you do. Because at that point, the other person has more control over your life than you do. I was just talking to somebody the other day and I said, well, this, if this person came in this room right now and was smiled at you and was happy to you, you'd be happy and then okay with it. But if this mm -hmm. same person came in, was angry, and it, it completely dictates how you move and how you, you know, control your, your own individual life. I said, I don't give people that power. Mm -hmm. um, I respect how people feel, you know, no doubt about that. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to let how you view me or how you feel about me dictate how I should move as an individual. If I did that, the empowerment perspective group would not be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I, growing up in the ballet world, that was 
a hard thing for me to realize as I got older because you are judged and you go in and you have these high expectations put on you and everybody is judging you, not just the teacher, the choreographer, but your fellow students, what pecking order you're in and everything. And um, I, it took me a long time to kind of realize like I don't need outside validation mm -hmm. to know right. that, you know, I can do whatever or feel however. So, I yeah. mean, the truth of the matter is that every job or career that you have, you're going to be judged on some level, right? So it's a matter of, do I take this as constructive criticism or do I, you know, I obviously listen to people. I, matter of fact, I'm more obsessed with my failures than I am with my successes. You know, <laughs> I want you to tell me that, you know, the audio is bad in podcasts. I want you to tell me that you're not looking at the camera and all these things. And it's like, all right, so I, I can, you know, make those, those adjustments. But there's, for me personally, there's not an emotional attachment to that, you know, critique. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of, uh, fall by the wayside and um, and being in education and I do a lot of observations of, of teachers and it blows my mind that some of these teachers are getting you know emotional about their observations it may be a bad observation or whatever and I get wanting to be the best that you can be but at the end of the day it's just an observation it's just one observation and you take <laughs> the critique and you keep it moving and I get that this might be your life and this might be your life works but I'm just one person. I see one thing. Again, you're letting me dictate how you feel about your career and how you feel about it. And I don't like giving people that power. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, and we all have our own power inside of us. And I think that um, it just sometimes we don't realize how, you know, how much power we actually do have and how much power we do give away to other people. So even from a fitness realm, I'm sure you have clients that are trying to get fit, not necessarily for themselves, right? They're oh, yeah. worried about what other people see themselves as. And, you know, one person might see what you have as being beautiful. And, you know, what I mean, another person may not. But to me, until you start focusing on it intrinsically and really worried about it, how it makes you feel as an individual, you're going yeah. to drive yourself crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I always think too, like, I think uh, uh, for women, especially because that's who I work with, but we tie our value into how we look and our self-worth and I'm not saying guys don't do that. I just think in our society that I think they show it in different ways maybe, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, knowing that like, you know, the day you were born, you are worthy and it doesn't matter what happens in your life. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. worthy Absolutely. of love and everything. So. I, I'm, you met my business partner. One of the things, Cream Spencer, one of the things we talk about and joke about is, listen, I look, I look good. I can't see <laughs> what I what I look like. That's your problem. If you don't <laughs> because I can't really see. But uh, you know, I just that self work and that self, uh, you know, your uh, the way that you view yourself and how you feel about yourself is to me ultimately what matters the most. I mean, I think people need to start focusing on on themselves instead of others um in all walks of life even you're you have a, a young child that's you know wants to be um in the entertainment business but their parents want them to be lawyers like you mm -hmm. know at the end of the day this is your job this is your life this is, they had their opportunity you know exactly yeah yeah and i think a lot of it comes from fear like especially just even talking about being an actor or an actress you know it's a tough business. I know from a ballet perspective, um, it's kind of similar in the respect of like, there's one role and there's like 200 people vying at least for this one role. So I know that uh, as a parent, you, you know, you kind of don't want your kids to go through that. But at the same time, if you want, like I always joke saying, you know, I have the baby bird and at some point they get pushed out of the nest mm -hmm. and we have to see if they fly. <laughs> so right. Can't keep them in the nest. Yeah, I mean, even if you just look at jobs in general, I know, but even before, you know, the coronavirus thing, like, and I did this thing with my students, I said, how many students are there in the world, right? So I broke down by state, and, and long story short, there's millions of people that are on the same path or the same time frame as you are as a, as a student. I said, there's no way that there's trillions of jobs out there. Mm -hmm. you, wanna, you know, somebody's going to get a job and somebody's not going to get a job, no matter what industry you're in, right? So, um 
coming from the entertainment background, it kind of frustrates me when, when I see parents say, well, you know, it's too hard to be an actor. It's too hard to be an actor. It's too hard to be a lawyer. It's too hard to be a dog. It's too hard to be a teacher. It's too hard to be a right. lawyer. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's about putting your kids and investing uh, in your children um, and trying to put them in, in positions to do whatever it is that they want. I personally believe everyone has a gift. Mm -hmm. right? you know, we were born with this gift and depending on what vehicle you put it in, it, it, you know, it's irrelevant, you know, as long as you're living your gift and your purpose. And that gift is what comes to you so easy that you don't have to think about it. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of, I think it's parents and we need to start working on our kids and discovering what their gift, even us as individuals need to start focusing on what our gift is and what we are truly gifted at. And then trying to find lanes to put that in different vehicles. And that's essentially what I've done in service educational industry, whether it's a podcast, whether it's speaking, whether it's being a principal, a teacher, it's all the gift of service. So yeah, it's just different vehicles. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. I feel like we all have something to share with everybody else because I think that's what makes us unique and different, and, right. you know. And I think this is the perfect time um, for us to start doing those self-assessments, um, mm. analyzing what our skills are, um, analyzing what, trying to get to what our gift is as individuals. This is the perfect opportunity, especially if, you know, you have a whole lot of time on your hands right now. Um, take a minute and part of your routine might be to do that self-assessment and then um, also finding pockets of areas where you need to improve on. Um, I'm super obsessed with that and trying mm. to uh, find lanes and be uncomfortable. Um, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable, right? So yeah. even in the, from a fitness standpoint, like the first time you're in a gym, it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to be hurt the next day. But yeah. that's telling you what, that your body is growing, right? You're getting stronger and it's growth. So there's growth in being uncomfortable. Um, so I would always try to reinvent myself and try to do different. I didn't know how to write a book. I didn't know how to write and make a podcast. So just say, you know, let's just try to make this happen. And then kind of navigate and develop those skills. But use this time wisely to do your self-assessments. Um, so for the back end of uh, the new normal, you'll be prepared for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, um, like when you say do an assessment, I don't know if a lot of people would do that because I think a lot of people don't like to really look and see exactly what is coming out of their brain and being written on that paper. You know, like, to really, and I don't get me wrong, because I am all on the same boat as you. Like, I want to keep leveling up every right. step of the time. And if I don't know how to do something, I'm going to fail my way to figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting thing, right? So not only do I do self-assessments, I have assessments. I ask colleagues to give me a professional self-assessment of myself. I've given mm -hmm. my family uh, opportunity to say what they felt about me. Like, I'm just information gathering at this point to really figure out, all right, is there a theme? Is there some commonalities that exist? All right, maybe I need to move a little bit better over here. But it takes a lot of vulnerability to be able to do that, right? And to really take a look at yourself and then really look at how people view you and, and trying yeah. to, to navigate, um, you know, those lanes where you need to improve on. But it's, yeah. it's that's a necessity, I think. I, I agree. I think that goes back to what we were saying about, um, having people kind of quote unquote judge you and maybe that's not the right word for this or you know uh constructive criticism and being okay with that and accepting even if somebody says something to you you can be like you can go back to thinking whatever you want to think you can think they're it's true or that you can think that it's false about you <laughs> so right. you get to ultimately decide um but yeah i do i do something similar as far as an assessment but it's a little different it's like what did i what worked well what didn't work and then what can i do differently and i kind of do that through different phases of my business um even like through my workout programs and things like that so it kind of gives you gives me a perspective of okay this is good. And you always start with the good because your brain will have a list of 5,000 things if you go to the bad <laughs> one. <first. laughs> but um, it kind of keeps me on track and it keeps, you know, I, I feel like I was talking in the other podcast um, the other day just about like I constantly just want to keep leveling up. And, and I think that if everybody wanted to level up and be the best version of themselves, we would live in a totally different world than we do yeah. today. I I find it amazing. Like, I'm, now that you're talking, I remember the first time I signed up for my gym and we did this assessment, right? So mm -hmm. they maybe do all these different exercises and they gave me some pointers of where I need to improve and stuff like that. I think 
you know, we're a lot easier to accept it in that sense. Um, but why not apply that same idea to all the areas of your life, whether it's financial, you know, your, your, your financial literacy and how you handle your finances, whether it's you being a parent, like all these different pockets, and all these different hats that you wear. Yeah. Deserves to have an assessment. And then, then you can go in and develop a plan and to be able to attack that individual plan. Otherwise, you're throwing darts in, in, in the dark and hopefully you're hitting the bullseye. Doesn't make sense to me. Right. One of the things that I have found, because I kind of do that a similar assessment when I talk to people, um, whether it be like on um, not just health, but wellness, I'm not wellness, um, physical fiscal fitness, <laughs> um, you know, spirituality and stuff like that. And it's interesting because what I find is that people, even though they may have a little couple different things in each topic, we all do the same thing over the course of all the different things. So like if you have a financial issue, chances are the same thing with your weight or your health. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how it kind of parallels how to me, that goes back to your why, right? And your behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just in one lane. Like your why is going to affect all of that. <laughs> Finances, mm -hmm. spiritual, you know, physical fitness. That why is so, so, so important because you're going to start to see uh, you, whether you're, if your behaviors are in line with the why, then you'll start to see those successes. But that's how you know that that may not necessarily be your why if you have all these <laughs> behaviors in different places. So, uh, <laughs> trying to be honest about that. Um, your why is going to change throughout the course of your life, obviously, mm. or kids and after kids married, but, but it's going to change. So don't expect it to be the same. Um, the other piece is that you should have, um, I call them five characteristics, again, non-negotiables, the things mm. that kind of make you tick, um, whether, you know, I come up with ideas, obviously family is important to me. Um, concept of hard work is important to me. Um, and then those things kind of shifted throughout the, you know, my life or whatever, but there are certain things where take hard work, for example, like my mentality is no one's going to outwork me. Right? <laughs> so if we're going to go, um, if we're going to do push-ups, if you want to do that, <laughs> either I'm going to die trying to beat you <laughs> or, you're, or I'm going to beat you. So um, finding your pillars, your five pillars of your individual uh, self is, is also important. Again, you can't do that without a self-assessment. So you have to be able to do an assessment to find out what those things are. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of the 80-20 rule? Somebody was just telling me. Yes, I did. I did a podcast with Surfside uh, Recovery. And Ian okay. about that, yes. Yeah, uh, Pareto, I think is his name, Pareto. But um, like you were saying earlier about, um, you know, spending your day and making, allowing time for Netflix or whatever you want to do. Uh, I kind of subscribe to that. Like 80-20, you can flip around it mm -hmm. kind of gets tweaked to whatever works for you. <laughs> right. And like, um, but 80% of the day, you know, do your tasks that you have that are going to progress you to your goal. And then 20% is relax time, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Same thing with food. I feel like, you know, I do say no foods off limits, but 80% of the time you need to be eating, you know, when you're hungry and stopping when you're comfortably full. And then the 20%, which probably equates to maybe like once a week, Oh, you know, feel like you can indulge or whatever, you know, you desire as far as food is concerned. But yeah, it's interesting how the 80-20 kind of um, can be applied to a lot of things. But I was just curious if you had heard about that. or. I mean, the golden ticket, though, is if you're doing something that doesn't seem like it's work and it's like leisure to you, like podcasting and talking to you right now, even though, you know, I'm working, <laughs> it's not work. Like to me, this is my leisure and downtime. Mm. So when you can find that pocket, it just becomes even, even sweeter. Um, so, you know, there's times, like I said, I play PlayStation. I do watch Netflix. I do. I am a human. I do do some of those right. things. Um, but I also try to find that golden ticket, that pocket where it's just like, hey, I'm working, but I did, I'm not really working. It's not like I'm really feeling. And it's kind of cliche, you know what I mean? But well, um, I think when you like talking about your why, I think when your why is strong and it's fun to do, like, I feel like, yeah, you're on the right path. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think we were meant to, you know, have a like horrible life. And that was, that's our reason to be on this planet. I feel like the more you do the things that you're called to do, mm -hmm. the happier you are, the more, you know, like, like even with serving, the more you serve other people, 
the more you get back from it. And it's, it's almost like the more you want to serve, it's a selfish thing because you like, you love that happy feeling, right, <laughs> you know, right. that you get. And then I get questions all the time. Well, how do I find my why? Like, how do I find, no, how do I find my gift? This was a lot of questions mm -hmm. I get. And I said, you know, I love vanilla ice cream. Not really, but I, said, I love vanilla <laughs> ice cream. I said, you know how I found out that I love vanilla ice cream? I tried it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, it's also part of stepping out of your comfort zone and trying to do different things. And I think you'll find you'll discover yourself and your capabilities and, you know, making yourself uncomfortable. Um, and again, now is the perfect time to do that thing that you always thought you would want to do. Write your blog, do your podcast, uh, write your book, uh, just do things that um, you necessarily didn't think you would ever do. It always was in the back of your mind. But the important part of it is, is do not. Writing with the intentions of, I just want to see what happens, right. right? If it fails, it fails. If people tell you if it's great, it's great. But you'll be able to um, find those that skill set and those things that we talked about. Um, it's a form of self-assessment at the end of the day is what, what happens. is trying to find out how, what you're capable of doing. I think a lot of times uh, people get stuck because they feel like it has to be perfect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I heard a saying a couple years ago. It was like, um, put your B minus work out. Mm -hmm. And which is interesting. Like you obviously want to like taking from my perspective of my business, I obviously am going to give value and I'm going to give as you know, everything and anything. It's not going to be F work. Right. But at the same time, if I tried to strive for a work, I would not get anything done. <laughs> I would not have gotten this podcast up. I would not have like nothing. So like, I think going out of, like you're saying, getting out of your comfort zone, I think that's where the, everything happens. When you're afraid, you need to keep going. Being perfect, perfect is relative, right? Right. So your perfect is different than my perfect, right? So I think yeah. we try to uh, quantitate or, you know, get, put a number on what perfect is because that's all we ever know. You know, you, know, you take a test, a perfect score is a hundred. Like we're, we're looking to have this finite number of what perfect means and perfect is different to everyone else. Um, I don't, I personally look at perf my perfection and amount of work ethic, uh, the amount of work that I put into something. The end product to me is, is irrelevant. If it works, it mm -hmm. works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> long as I put forth the effort, because uh, that's the only thing I can control is how much effort I put into stuff. So I measure my perfection based upon the amount of work that I put in and not the product of it in the back end. Because the reality of the situation is we can have this idea of what we want this product to look like at the end, and it never, ever looks like it. <laughs> never. <laughs> I don't get caught up in uh, you know, the, the end result of it. It's just m more about the effort that I put in. So tell me a little bit about some tips for post-corona. Ah, post-corona. And not the beer. <laughs> <laughs> you might be stumbling a little bit now. <laughs> um, I, I think we need to start looking beyond um, this um, and trying to look at what the new normal is going to be. Um, even on the career level, I know me as an educator, I don't think that's not a lot of conversations about what's going to happen on the back end of this and the ramifications of everything that's going down you know, in terms of contracts and even the mental health of kids coming back to school. Like there's so much stuff on the background and the back end of this thing that we need to prepare for. Having said that, though, there's also going to be millions of opportunities on the back end of this thing. Um, so kind of getting ahead of, of it, you know, and trying to find, again, your gift and your, your why, and then trying to navigate how you're going to fit in, in the pocket of the back end of, of when things go to the, to the new norm. It is the perfect time to reinvent yourself. It is the perfect time, again, to, to um, broaden your horizons and things. But there's going to be so many opportunities, especially in the service industry, on the back end of this thing that you could be preparing for that right now. Um, whether, you know, you might be out of work or you might not be in love with your job. Again, now's the time to start putting yourself in a position where you can start taking advantage of these opportunities. Um, even, I hate, I'm not going to hate to say it because you're going to have a whole lot of comp uh, competitors now, even in the fitness and health industry. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of people sitting on couches right now doing absolutely nothing. And when they walk out of here, you're going to need a lot of stuff. Barbers in itself and hairstyles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Makeup <laughs> like, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on and on. But now it's the important time for you to start looking at those pockets and saying, well, I'm good at this. I can, you know, maybe this is my side hustle. Or maybe this is, you know, something I really wanted to do anyway. Now it's an opportunity for me to, to, to do that. So um, as, 
as stressful as things are right now, maybe right now, I think we need to start thinking two steps ahead, like okay. we're playing a game of chess, like what's, you know, mm -hmm. what's going to be the next move at the end, of, at the end of the day. I think too, with the, um, the internet and everything and people kind of getting a taste of what it is to work at home. Uh, I know for me, I do see clients in person normally, but I also do online. So for me, it wasn't too much of a transition, but you know, there are definitely some advantages to working from home. And I think telecommuting is going to go up of uh, quite a bit. I, I think because not only that, but then the, the employers, they don't have to pay rent on space. Right. You know, the employees are happier. They get to, well, maybe they get to spend time at home yeah, <laughs> depending yeah. on what the home situation is. But, yeah. um, not yeah. just that. Um, okay. Cause the first time you were on our podcast, it was in person. Like we always right. used to be there and live and, you know, doing certain things. We travel to different places, but obviously we can't do that right now. I could have easily said, you know what, we're not going to do podcasts to the end of this day. I don't know. Well, there's got to be a way to be able to make this happen. So let's do a virtual. Oh, there's Zoom. There's uh, Google Meet. There's things <laughs> out there. Let's do it. I think it, the situation is going to change the game for so many people um, and have opportunities for so many people, um, whether they want to start a new business or whatever the case may be. I just want, don't want people to not be prepared for taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, and now's the time to play. <laughs> Yeah. I hope people don't have tunnel vision either because I find that a lot of people think they just have like two choices mm. to do something and that's never the case. It's mm. usually like you've got like 10, at least 10 different options that you could go off and veer off of and just kind of let your brain explore, you know, kind of going back to your why, like what is it you really want to do? What do you want to get out of this life while you're in here, you know? If you discover your gift right now, you know how many lanes you could put your gift in vehicles you could put that in and yeah. leverage whatever it is. Like, you know, it's it's so important. It, it's vital. We've always been, you know, preaching it at the Empowerment Perspective group, but um, I think now is the perfect time for people to sit and discover their gift, discover their why, do their assessment, start making their plans for the back end of it um, and getting ahead of it. Because, you know, once things start to slow down and go back to the new normal, it's, it's go time. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to slow down. I think it's funny. I was talking to somebody the other day and we are big Disney fans. I don't know if you are, but um, I was joking saying that I think when Disney reopens, they should play the song from Frozen from Anna when she's like, open the castle doors. And <laughs> But I feel like everybody's just going to like run outside and like <laughs> bum rush everything. It's a little fun fact. So my daughter's a cheerleader and we were in Disney. Uh, we were down there when they closed it. Oh, uh, wow. So they actually uh, was there. I left the day before, but they were there that, the day that it actually closed. Oh, they, wow. So, yeah, I can yeah. definitely see the gates opening and everyone's kind of, I think the problem is I think everyone's going to start running to the wrong stuff, though. They're going to yeah. start running out to bars. They're going to start running out to clubs and you know, all that stuff. And I, it's not the time to, the, the opportunities actually, because everyone's going to be doing that, that makes it even more important for you to go left and, and to do something else. Cause everyone's going to go run and, and, and yeah. Yeah. Do things that they couldn't do before. Right. Right. Which actually they're probably doing them at home anyway. Like the amount of posts I've seen on dr different drinks, different <laughs> beers, whatever, <laughs> you know, I, the situation hasn't changed. We're just now at home doing it rather right. than going to the movie theater and going to a bar and, having dinner out, it's like you go pick up dinner, you, you know, which again, nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do, but. <laughs> I think yeah. my mother asked me um, the other day, she was like, well, what are the three things that you miss the most that you can't do right now? And I had a hard time really answering that question. Like I said, there's really, I'm not really doing anything that I couldn't do before, that I didn't do before. Like, you know, all right, yeah, go out, have a nice meal at a restaurant. Uh, okay, I can cook at home and do that. Yeah, there's, I, other than sports, to be honest with you, I can't go and watch a sporting event right now. Like, that's the only thing that's really, and, and travel. Those are probably the two things that I could think of um, that I, I actually miss. But um, I think this is making us slow down and making us, you know, simplify things. And I know one thing that my bank account has gotten going up because I can't spend any money because I'm in the house. So, uh, that, that's always a good thing. Yeah, I um, I'm never realized how much a homebody I was until this. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really miss anything right now. 
<laughs> I mean, and I was the type of person that always wanted to be on the go. Like I always had to go out and do something and not necessarily like anything bad, whether I'm going to go present or go see someone talk. Like mm. I'm always out of the house, but now it's really kind of forced me obviously to slow down and kind of, I've been doing my own self-assessments and you know, it's not pretty on some level. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I'm yeah, not yeah. giving you advice that I w- I'm not currently doing myself. I don't know what's going to look like on the back end for me personally, but I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I think our biggest thing is you're going to go to Disney when it opens again. <laughs> That's what I'm really about it. Tell everyone where they can find you. You're everywhere. We are everywhere. So our website is theempowermentperspective.com. We're ter- certain, uh, right now I'm tweaking some things, so there might be a little bit of lag there, but I'm trying to reinvent that as well. Um, obviously, we are on Facebook, the Empowerment Perspective Group. Uh, we are on LinkedIn as the Empowerment Perspective Group. We're on Twitter um, as uh, Empowerment underscore PG. We're on Instagram, Empowerment Perspective Podcast. Um, Pinterest, you can find us there. You can find us <laughs> iTunes. Uh, we're all over any social media outlet. If you search up Empowerment Perspective Group or Empowerment Perspective Podcast, um, you'll definitely see us up there. Um, we are currently in season four of our podcast. And because we are locked in, we've been doing podcasts one a day. So there, we've been dropping them every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, we have awesome. one coming out. Uh, this Wednesday, I don't know when this podcast is going to air, but it's coming out this Wednesday. But the important one um, that you want to definitely check out. Besides mine. Besides no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we have one coming out next Saturday, the 18th, um, specifically on um, addiction and recovery, um, mm. the Surfside um, recovery, uh, that group there. So um, we talk about mental health, we talk about addiction, and there's still help out there for you, um, even though, you know, certain things are closed. Um, Such an important topic right now. Um, So definitely check that one out. Um, And we have a whole bunch of different resources for you, for anyone that's struggling with uh, addiction or any mental health issues as well. Yeah. So if anybody, if you didn't catch all that, um, I am going to have it in the show notes and you can find that at shapeitupfitness.com. And now we're going to dive into the speed round of questions. Are you ready? You forgot about it. I almost did too. (laughs) We were chit-chatting. Okay. So they're short and sweet, but just try and answer whatever pops in your head first. Gotcha. All right. Dog or cat? Neither. I'm not an animal person. Wait, you have dogs. Uh, I'm still not. I have a dog and cat, so I'm I'm not an animal person. No, if I had to pick one, I'm going to go cat. Okay. Sweet or salty food? Salty. What in particular? Hmm. I'm not a sweets person. So I don't like sweets, so that's why I went that way. I wouldn't necessarily pick salty, but I'm not. We can't be friends here. anymore. No. Uh, <laughs> Just definitely, definitely not a chocolate. I can't eat chocolate. No, I don't like chocolate either. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite song? Ooh. Favorite song. Man, that's that's a tough one. Hmm. Can we come back to that one? <laughs> so another little fun fact is that I used to be a rapper back in the day. So I was ah. music and producing and DJ. So I'm going through my head right now with a thousand million songs right now. <laughs> any <laughs> any rap music on YouTube of you? Here, there's my dog barking. Oh Trust no, me. this is pre this is pre YouTube. This pre- is pre, <laughs> you know, I'm old. So, this so is records. <laughs> yeah. I think we had a CD. I think when CDs first <laughs> came out is when um, we had uh, it was something you know local and everything and that's then, cool that's very I had a whole cool career at espn and each like, it was a whole bunch uh, of stuff <laughs> very cool i always think it's interesting when you start talking to people because like especially like i mean i'm in my 40s and i i don't ha- know how old you are but i'm not going to ask you but like it's interesting because like i know in the in my 20s i was so not the person that i am today like and everybody has the stories of what they, you know, what they did back then. And it's, it's kind of cool. It's unfortunate. Like now it's on, if you're on Facebook or whatever, you know, kids nowadays, your whole history is out for the world to see. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm in my four, I'm 43. So I've definitely gone through some phases, but I have two older brothers. So I kind of experienced life earlier than uh-huh. I guess I should. Be. I was going to college parties when I was a freshman in high school. So mm-hmm. I've already experienced certain things and it definitely went through phases. Um, I don't know. I think this is probably the most comfortable I've ever been. Though. That's good. That's good. You don't want to be comfortable like in your thirties and not be there anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, uh, not at all. Okay. Yes. What is your favorite book and why? 
life music by Dr. Demiso A. Josie, of course, is my, uh, my favorite book is actually um, The Coldest Winter Ever um, by uh, a writer named Sister Soldier. Um, and it's just because um, the story is about the inner city youth. Um, and at the time that I started digging into it, I was a little bit past that age range of those kids that were talking and then kind of just uh, the way that she wrote and the stuff that she talked about kind of just, just you know, uh, I guess brought me back to my childhood experiences and things of that nature. So uh, that was probably my favorite book, but my favorite author is Toni Morrison. I'm not familiar with him. <laughs> I'll have to check these <laughs> authors out. All right, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Trade in Places, Eddie Murphy, Dan <laughs> Aykroyd. I have to watch it every Christmas. Um, <laughs> one of the best movies ever. That is a good movie. What, this is the last one, what is your favorite inspirational quote? Um, I have something that's on my um, work email. It says that uh, successful people do what average people won't. Mm, that's a good one. Yep. That's probably my favorite one. Who wants to be average? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be different. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so I guess my favorite song now that it's got some thought about it, um, there's a rapper by the name of Common and there's a song called I Used to Love Her. Um, he talks in songs, it sounds like he's talking about a female, um, but he's actually talking about hip hop um, mm. at the end of it. So that's probably, a, it's a classic song in hip hop community and that's probably my favorite one. Very cool. I'll have to look all these up. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you said like MC Hammer, and now Ice. He was an entertainer. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think the first, um, CD I got that was a rap was um I can't think of his name it's the baby got back oh to, um, um to no, no, to no um Sir Mix a lot yes <laughs> and I love that CD <laughs> <laughs> it's funny I turn that song on and my, my me and my daughter's dancing to it and they're like eight and ten so it's kind of funny to see them doing that but um, yeah, yeah. interesting CD yeah, I like the song Testarossa that's on there. Yeah. It's about a, it's a car or yeah. something. Yeah. He's taking me back now. So I know. Gotta go watch. I think my first CD was um, DJ Dazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Parents just don't understand? No, it was Summertime, summertime. that one. That yeah. a classic summer song. <laughs> Every summer you have to play that song. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. And uh, like I said, everyone, you can find the show notes at shapeitupfitness.com. And any last parting words you want to leave anybody with? Um, I, I guess the only thing I can say is, is you know, uh, take this time again to do some self-reflection and, um, you know, start planning forward and plan on living the best life that you possibly can live. So, because right now, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty in the world um, and we just need to go out there and spread love and, and just enjoy life. Get back to the basics and stop worrying about stuff that does not matter in the grand scheme of things and just go out there, work hard, but enjoy um, and try to enjoy life as much as you can possibly do. Very well said. All right. <laughs> Hey, if you're frustrated by moving more and eating less, but still not seeing the pounds go down, I want to help you fill in the missing pieces to get you the results that you desire. Head over to shapeitupfitness.com and schedule your consult today to find out how you can ditch the diets for good and live in a leaner body that you love.